Welcome to Canada. I just arrived four minutes ago. Now I'm on my way to the hotel. So I just took a bus from rural Vietnam near Cambodia. Uh, four and a half hours. I'll be here for a week. The traffic is crazy here, I swear. Sometimes we're going to die. So I think while I'm here in this town, really what I want to do is give you an idea of what it's like to come to be around this area. What are some of the tourist things to do in the area and maybe some of the non-tourist things to do in the area? Really not sure. All I know is I'm meeting a guy that I met from the internet through couch surfing. He says he's going to help me. Sounds kind of cool. He doesn't sound like he's too busy during the week, so he has a bit of time to help me out, show me around, guide me through the town, and which will be awesome. So I think I think I want to go to the floating market and a couple other places just to see what it's like to be here, to live here. It's about 9 a.m. I moved my friend Ryan. I met him yesterday from couch surfing. He's generous enough to kind of show me around his town and guide me through some of the things that some foreigners do when they come, what there is to do, and maybe some things that most foreigners don't know about. So hopefully we can explore. The first place we're going today is what? What is it called? Chuk Lam Zem Monastery. It's mm. kind of like meditation center. A monastery, so like a pagoda type of thing? Uh, okay, yeah. so we're going to a pagoda. Uh, let's go check it out. Okay, so we made it to the pagoda, the temple, the monastery. Uh -huh. Tell me anything you know about this place. I know nothing. I'm not really a religious guy, so I don't know a lot yeah. about this area. So me neither. Okay, <laughs> why do people come here? What do, what religion is this? Why would people come here? What do they do? Actually, this, this pagoda is a uh, Buddhist, Buddhist pagoda, and most people come here to like worship the Buddha. This place was open back to 2014, I oh, guess. Oh dang, so it's new. Yeah, it's kind of new. The buildings look very old though. Yeah. They're made to look old, maybe? Yeah, it's, it, yeah it, maybe okay. it's kind of like a, a structure, a architecture. So I'm learning all sorts of information. Um, Ryan was saying that, I asked him, do you follow a religion? Like, he says he was not Buddhist, so are you religious? And no, which is okay. And you had said that there's like 70 or 75 percent of yep. people in Vietnam do not have a religion. They don't follow anything. It's just mm -hmm. they tend to like follow the the Buddhist. Okay. Buddhism. The, their values and their principles. Yeah, but they they don't follow them. They don't follow the God. Yeah, they tend to like go to the pagoda. They they believe that if they really? do something bad, because Buddhism is like the main religion here in Vietnam. So everyone tends to like go to Pagoda, they believe that if they do something bad, if something bad happens back to them. It's like the consequences, anything happens in their life happens for a reason. They try to be like as nice as they can. So even if they're not religious, even if they don't follow a god, they would still come to the, the Pagoda to yeah. kind of worship like, or take time and spend time here? Yeah, yeah like, like my mother. Yeah. She usually go to Pagoda, she usually like praying okay. like, like that. Yeah. Yep, but yeah, she, she doesn't follow a god. Yeah. Interesting. Different. That's the reason why there's so many people in Vietnam that are not religious. Yeah, I did not know. I didn't even know that fact. That's interesting. So when it starts to rain, you can always go into a coffee shop and have coffee. If you haven't been to Vietnam and if you haven't had Vietnamese coffee, I encourage you. It is absolutely amazing. It is completely different than any other cup of coffee I've had anywhere else in the world. And uh, I want to show you how it's made. Let's go check it out. So I've been here for, we've been here for like 15 seconds and he was saying that somehow this is a special coffee shop. <laughs> where no, it's, the owner just told me about a couple of things. <laughs> so it's like a couple coffee shop, so you go up with your couple. So always something new in Vietnam. <laughs> I think we're gonna, we might go upstairs and have coffee but not do the couple thing or we may just stay on the bottom and, and not participate in the couple thing. We don't know what it is, but it sounds sounds weird. So we're going up, it's getting darker and darker, and kind of like a 70s porno oh. shoot. This is really, there's like private rooms. Yeah, it's a private room. What kind of, where, where are you taking me? I don't know. My God. We don't do this in America. We don't go to special, Actually, this is the first time I go to something like this. 
<laughs> this is crazy. Um, no. This is a totally random place. We just, it was raining, so we stopped at the first co coffee shop, and it's like a special place. And the prices are more expensive, like double the regular price. Oh my god, this is like a hotel or something like this. Oh, this is a room. I don't know if we're supposed to go in here. But there's like beds and snuggle areas. Dude, I don't know. Is it, we're supposed to go sit on the floor here? Where do we go? I don't know. What did she say? Like, just choose one room and go in. Just choose a room. <laughs> there's a kind of hostel or something. Yeah, it's, so you rent a hotel for coffee for 20 minutes? First time for everything, I guess. <laughs> we'll let you know what happens. So anyway, yeah, I don't. This whole feeling is kind of weird. Oh wow! And then she shuts the door. This is the craziest thing I've ever did in, in since I've been in Vietnam. I don't know what, what <laughs> that is all about. Like me, even now Vietnamese, I, I, I don't know what this place either. <laughs> so, I want to show you about coffee because I love the smell of coffee, I love the taste of coffee, but I'm not a huge coffee fan in America. I maybe drink it once every week um, and have a small cup because I love the smell and then I taste it and I'm like, eh, it doesn't taste as good as the smell. But Vietnam is a place that has the most amazing coffee I've ever tasted in my life. It is so unbelievably strong. Basically, they put the coffee in here, which is a different kind of coffee, and it's a very strong coffee. They fill it with hot water, and it goes down, and, and it filters, and it drips through there, and basically drips in there. Now the white is um, sweetened, yeah, sweetened condensed milk, and it drips in there. So it maybe takes five minutes to make a cup of coffee and then you stir it together and drink it. It is so strong and it's very sweet. It's ultra, ultra dark, strong coffee mixed with a very sweet milk. And so, and it's a very creamy finish because the condensed milk is very thick and it's just the most amazing blend of coffee ever. If you like strong coffee, you need to fly to Vietnam and experience this. So after the coffee is done dripping, you basically just stir the milk together and that's it. It seems like every time I go and try coffee, it's a different flavor every time, so... I don't know, this one looks light, so we'll see. Not very good. So make sure... Whew, it's like I'm drinking pure milk with very little coffee. So it's like very sweet. So, if you have a bad experience when you try it the first time, make sure you continue to try. Because there's some coffees when you drink it, it's not brown, it's like a black finish and it is so strong and it's so unbelievably delicious. So I, I, I recommend that you, you try a couple different coffee shops. Good morning and welcome to the river. It's about 6 a.m. We met with Ryan's friend who happens to be a tour guide. What is the name of this river, do you know? Uh, I looked it up on Google but I forgot. This? It's good for you. Oh, it's a crab. <laughs> oh my god. I have a crab. Thank you. Do I wear it this way or this way? Like this? This feels very weird. <laughs> I feel like a, I feel like a princess. <laughs> I don't know if that's okay. So we're on the river, and we are going to experience the local floating market. So the engine just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> just randomly stop. But I see she has a container of fuel, so I think we ran out of fuel. No. Let's hope. No? What did she say? Yeah. She said, watch the sunrise. <laughs> ah, okay, cool. <laughs> So Ryan was saying that every item for sale within a boat is put on the top of their boat on a big stick. For example, this boat behind me sells pumpkins. <laughs> I think well, pumpkins. I think it's like a big ass pumpkin. Is it a pumpkin? Yeah. 
So what's the reason why they uh, put the food on the pole? What? Oh, the food. Yeah, food. yeah. Because they like, they don't have to like fry the the product they selling out. And most of people living on the boat, they don't know how to read or write. Huh? So if you write on a, a boat, like, oh, I'm selling pumpkin. People from far, behind, oh far away, oh, don't have no idea what they, what are you selling. So we're stopping for a bit of breakfast at a uh, food stall on the river. So what do you have for breakfast? Noodles. What else? What is inside? Pork, liver, carrot, onion. Does it have a name? Hotel. So I'm no longer wearing my crown. I have this. What is the name of this? I feel like the Wicked Witch of the West. I also got the same breakfast and a different lady came by with coffee. So I got uh, hot milk coffee. I don't know if it'll, it does not look good. Wow, that's terrible. It tastes like instant coffee. We're leaving the cluster, the market, I guess, and we're going to... Where? The village where they're making rice noodles. Yeah, rice paper also. So a place with rice paper and rice noodles. Okay, so tell everybody what is the key to winning the heart of a beautiful Vietnamese woman? <laughs> I don't know, maybe you're the professional, I don't know. Does it start with wearing this hat? You must wear this hat. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All the ladies were working away from you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so in a nutshell, the tour to this place was pretty cool. You get to experience this totally different culture that just does not exist in at least American Western society. It's, it's a different thing. So I highly recommend that if you are in Vietnam, you go and do some type of tour on some type of river or floating market. It's a different experience, I, I recommend for sure. And what do you recommend to people who are like me who are not a huge fan of going on the big tour, big organized tour? We like the local feel and they don't know you. So if they want to come and go on a small boat like this and not feel like a tourist, what is your best recommendation to do? Or is there really no recommendation? Just go along the river and buy someone next to the boat and that's very It's that simple. Yeah. Okay. So go to the river, find someone with a boat and say, hey, will you take me? And negotiate a price. What do you think is a normal or fair price if they were to find someone at the river? Because we hate feeling like we've been ripped off. $15. $15. So maybe, so maybe yeah, 250, 350,000, somewhere through there. Okay, so if you want to find a smaller, cheaper boat instead of going on a big tour, but you don't know how to organize it, come to this area. Apparently it's the area where the big tours take off from. It's in the center of the city, right on the river. The main, the main area. And just don't buy a ticket and just come down an alley like this. Or just go to the shoreline and look for someone sitting in a very small boat and then just use your phone, Google Translate, and try to negotiate a price. But if you like the, the big tours and the big boats, I mean, by all means do that. So we made it to here. What is the name of this place? Gang you. Wow, that's a difficult one. <laughs> I Even Vietnamese is yeah. hard to do. What is it again? Zhang huh? Zangu. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying this is all from one central tree that mm -hmm. starts to grow and as the root as the as the limbs go down and touch the ground it looks like it shoots up it shoots down roots into the soil which looks like it creates new trees, but it's all from one mm -hmm. central tree. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very big. It's huge. I always find it funny traveling Asia. Some of the names, the crazy names. Check out the name of this cafe. Okay. 
So another thing you can do in the area is explore the streets. Vietnam is completely different from probably anything you've ever experienced in your hometown if you're watching this on YouTube from a Western country. Everything is different. <laughs> everything is outside, everybody's selling everything always. So I recommend that you come to go to the streets and just explore. We are at a market, you know, that is this, does it have a name, this particular market? No, no, we're just at a random market next to where we got off of the boat. They have fruits, vegetables, octopus, seafood, <laughs> pretty much everything, clothes, food, cooked food, coffee, and a lot of motorbikes. Just as I was going to go outside and go to the night market, a storm is coming. It's actually starting to rain right now, and as far as I can see, it's black skies, so basically, it's not gonna happen. I'm going to leave tomorrow morning, so I won't be able to do the night market. But I did kind of go through the, the market during the day, so I encourage you, if you're in the area, be sure to go to the market. Uh, it's a wild experience compared to Western cultures. If you haven't been to Asia before, uh, they do the markets very similar here as most, most places in Asia. It's a very um, dirty and interesting experience. So I, I recommend that you go just to see it. I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you now feel comfortable coming to Kanta and exploring um, and kind of get an idea of what you want to do when you're here. The tourist level here is pretty low, so I encourage that you come and have a more authentic experience here. Thank you for watching. Remember, time is running out. Start living. Take care.